Welcome, Concrete Crazies. My name is Tyler Lay, and it's another awesome episode. This time, we're gonna design another reinforced concrete beam, but this one, this one's a little bit different. This one, we know nothing. We know nothing other than the moment of the beam. We gotta come up with a cross section. We gotta come up with the amount of steel. This is a true challenge because there's like 20 degrees of freedom. There's like 20 variables that we don't know what they are. We've got another simply supported beam. It's got a uniform load on it. It's got, here's the concrete strength. Here's the yield strength of the steel. There's the dead load, the live load. We use the load factors to factor that to get my four kip per foot load. Here's our maximum moment, 3456 kip inches. I'm gonna assume 0 0.9 and I get 3840 kip inches. Ah! but I'm missing something. I don't know what my cross section is. I don't know. I get to pick it out. Ho, ho, ho. It's pretty rare to not have any restrictions on the size of your beam. People almost always want to restrict your depth because they don't want to hit their head on the beam or they want to run like some pipe behind, beside it or something like that. So they usually restrict either the width or the depth, almost always, but this time they didn't. Ha. So what do we do? Well, we're gonna take these three equations, the moment capacity, the A calculation, the rho, or the reinforcement ratio calculation. We're gonna combine them together. That's what all this is doing down here. Bunch of algebra, and we get this mythical, awesome, cool, awesome equation. Very, very, very cool equation. And then we're gonna simplify it. If we look at this equation though, we know almost everything in it. We're gonna solve for BD squared on one side and look at everything else. We know our moment, yes. We know our yield strength. We know our, our yield strength. We know our F prime C. The only thing we don't know in this equation is our row. We don't know our row. So we wanna pick a row that's not too big and not too small. We wanna pick a row that's just right. If you get a row near about 0.015, near about there, then you're in the danger zone of your fee no longer being 0.9. Therefore, I like a row of 0.01. That's my preference. That doesn't mean it's the way you have to do it. If you wanted to, you could choose and work this problem again multiple ways using multiple rows, but I like a row of 0.01. It keeps me away from the danger zone. When I start to plug into my equation now, and if I solve that whole thing, I get six, eight, eight, eight inches cube. Onward! What do we do now? We've got this BD squared number. What do we do now? Well, we're gonna assume that our D is equal to 1.5B. We know we don't have to do this. We could pick all kinds of other different kinds of numbers, but I'll tell you, I'm gonna be like Yelp for reinforced concrete. You know what Yelp is, right? It's the app that when you don't know what to do or where to eat, it like gives you suggestions. I'm giving you suggestions to help you get through the maze, okay? So this is a good starting place. Doesn't have to be this, but it's, it's a good guess. If for some reason somebody was forcing us to have a certain B or D, then we could just use that. But this means if I plug into the previous equation I showed you, my B cubed is 30, 61. This gives me my B, take the cube root of that, it's 14 and a half, and I'm gonna round this up. Why? Why? Because I don't wanna build things at a half inch or a quarter inch or a third of an inch increment. I wanna build them in nice round numbers. 14 inches, 15 inches, pardon me, is a nice, nice round number. That makes my D 1.5 times 15, 22.5, you do not round this, you do not, you do not. But ladies and gentlemen, we now have an estimate from our cross section. We know our B is 15 inches, we know our D is 22 and a half, or at least that's a great first guess. So we can just start plowing ahead. We know what to do now. We're gonna take our moment capacity, we're gonna assume this is 0.9D. Why did we do that? Because it makes our lives a lot easier, and we're gonna check it later on. We are not violating code here, ladies and gentlemen. This is just a way to work the problem faster. Here we go. So we're gonna plug into this equation, and that whole thing is equal to 3.16 inches squared. Now that I have my estimate, 
for my area of steel, I gotta figure out how many bars I want. So I can choose all kinds of different sizes of bars. Here's the different areas. Here is the math I'm doing to figure out how many bars I need. And then I'm gonna round up, okay? Now I can choose any number here. I'm gonna go pick a number 10 bar because I like about three to four bars on my cross section, okay? And I just, I like a number 10. It, I could have choose any of these and try to make them work. I'm gonna pick a number 10. So I'm gonna provide 3.81 inches squared. Now let's find my H and my actual D, because I had some guesses before, but now I get to figure out what I really have. Now, I'm gonna take my H, that is the cover, it's an internal exposure, so it's one and a half inches, plus my stirrup, okay, which is half an inch, plus my D, okay, that was my old estimate, 22 and a half, and I get my H now is 24 and a half inches. Now this needs to be a round number. I wanna build a beam with a round number for the width and also the overall depth. So I'm gonna round this up to 25 inches. Now, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to guess anymore. We can find our actual D. We do our same calculation before. Our, our height minus our cover minus our stirrup is 23 inches, and we do not have to round this number. If it comes out to be like 22.8, it's 22.8. It's not that big of a deal. This is now our D. Now, we're going to have our, our a check on the spacing of our beam to make sure that we can fit all our bars in there, okay? So our B, which happens to be 15 inches, has to be two times the cover, which is one and a half, plus two times the stirrup diameter, which is a half, plus two times the bend radius, which has to be four stirrup diameters. You don't believe me? Watch my other video. That's four times a half, plus two times three minus one times 1.27, okay? That's equal to 15 inches, which is greater than 11.08 inches. And this is the minimum amount of spacing that I could use and still have a satisfactory beam. Homeward stretch again, we're almost there. Now we've got to check our area of steel, our AS min. We calculated them here and we would choose the larger of these two and we compared them to the amount of steel that I ended up providing. And we're good, we're good, yes! No problems. Then I have my fee check. So I calculated my A, then I calculate my C. I used a beta one, a 0.8, because I'm using a F prime C of 5,000 PSI. I get 4.48 inches. I get to now solve for the strain in my steel, okay, 0.012 which is greater than 0.005, therefore, yes! Again, my fee is 0.9, good assumption. Onward we go. Here's our final moment check. Now I'm just verifying that I didn't do anything wrong, didn't make any bad assumptions. I get 48.46, it's greater than 38.40. Done!